Welcome to the 2019 Health Information Systems Symposium. I'm Des Blanchfield. We're in here in Orlando and I have the pleasure of being joined by David Rue, Chief Medical Officer for Samsung Electronics. Hi David, how are you? Very good. Now thanks for joining me on camera. A couple of things I'd really love to get your insights on. Firstly, uh, connectivity. How does connectivity play a role in healthcare? Well, one of the big challenges that we see in healthcare is it's just too darn expensive. And the reason why is because a lot of care is being managed for sick individuals. Care is moving outside of the hospital. We're starting to become more proactive. We're starting to learn how we can be able to identify individuals before they get to the point of coming in for the emergency department. You need connectivity. Right. You need the ability to communicate, to be able to identify if things are going well. Maybe these car virtual visits, connected care. I think there's a lot of different opportunities for us to be able to explore how connectivity can be applied in healthcare. Well, with that in mind, uh, when we talk about connectivity, Internet of Things and Internet of Medical Things are becoming a, a massive trend. Uh, how are these changing healthcare? Well, when we think of Internet of Things, there's everything from a wearable to sensors to patches to uh, you name it. And a large part of that is something that will better understand as the newer sensors come out, what are the different ways that we can capture different right. data sets. So it's not just about steps anymore, it's about physiologic parameters. It's about activity and understanding how that activity could potentially change our behavior. Let me give you an example. So uh, we did a study with uh, went through our, one of our partners, 40 individuals living in a home uh, independently, seniors, low income, no caregiver. And they identified that patients who were sicker tend to sleep longer. They tend to go to the oh, bathroom right. more frequently. They tend to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. They tend to be less active overall, tend not to access the refrigerator. These are all things that can be done through simple motion sensors. So as we start gathering all this data, we can draw insights from it and allow us to be able to become more proactive. So in this evaluation, uh, they found that over a one year period, they could actually have an 80% reduction in ER visits wow. with the use of these more proactive sensors and some analytics behind it. Well, we've seen in traditional enterprise spaces where uh, you know we've had data-driven decision making uh, and a number of things with business intelligence and so forth. I guess it's now a logical step that healthcare is now uh, making use of this kind of capability. Um, when we think about what you were talking about before with proactive health, I mean, where are we going with proactive health? What does this mean? Well, you know, in large part, we're going to where we need to go. We need to figure out ways to reduce cost, be able to give greater ownership of the overall health to the consumer, to the patient. And so if you think about what happened earlier this week, uh, SEMA Verma, CMS, yep. making some important declarations around how data are going to be now brought to the phone and able to uh, have consumers gain access to that making sure that we don't block the information exchange. That's where it's going. You know, it's right. consumer-directed uh, care uh, being managed by the consumer on their devices, making more portable. Uh, that will be something that we need to build some structure around. And that's why right. connectivity, that's why a variety of different uh, guidelines and regulations will be important in this process. And that's a massive change. Uh, what are some of the other changes you've seen in the last five years within healthcare, particularly with what we're talking about around uh, technology and IoT and so forth? Well, one of the most exciting things is the explosion in terms of sensors. Uh, right. Everything in terms of uh, being able to track things that traditionally have been tracked in the hospital, in the okay. clinic starting to be able to be done by individuals outside of the hospital with some very easy, inexpensive tools to use. That's a really exciting thing because now the consumer, the patient has an ability to be able to do some of the things without having to be required to go into a facility. Right. I guess we've, we've seen this massive shift from uh, having lots of devices in hospitals and healthcare environments that beat uh, and we're not connected to now, they're all being connected. Um, with that in mind, I mean, what, is, what does a doctor visit look like in the future? I mean. The, so many changes in the way the technology is being applied, the types of technologies. I'm curious to get your view on what a doctor's visit might look like in the future. Well, we're seeing it today, but I think in probably a larger scale, we'll probably see doctors managing populations and the right. individuals that they do see will probably be the ones that they've gone through some process of vetting through a virtual care model. Okay. So individuals potentially going home with some wearables, some patches, uh, these could be specific for a disease condition. Maybe you're getting some of that information flowing into a platform where there's been some proactive analytics. But then at the end of the day, somebody needs to talk to them, they need to see them. Right. Could be through a virtual care visit at home, and then maybe they bring them into the clinic for if they're really sick. That's the type of care we want to be able to, to deliver. Very cost efficient care that's uh, affordable, that allows people to be able to manage care at home. But at the same time, we're maximizing the use of the clinicians and the resources that we have. Well, I guess this leads me to my final question for you, if you don't mind, and that is that you know, 
Populations are growing. Uh, the, the population itself is aging. We're living for longer. Yes. Um, love to get your thoughts around the types of technologies that are now going to be applied to making life uh, better for us as we do grow older and, and we try to manage our lives uh, and the health ourselves and then that transition into, I guess, you know, care. Uh, what, what can you share about what's happening, where we're going in that space? Well, I think this is probably one of the untapped areas for technology to really make a big impact. And that's around addressing needs for seniors. Seniors have needs that are very particular. They, we are living longer, and right. so certainly uh, we are starting to recognize that you know, many of us have a desire to retain our cognitive skills, yep. to uh, be less lonely, be better connected to individuals. Uh, but at the same time, we would love to be able to improve our functional status so we don't have to feel uh, like we're relying on other people. Right. And so technology that independence. The independence, the ability to safely live independently, feel confident about that. So there's a lot of interesting technologies today that can help us in that capacity. We've got today wearables that can provide mm -hmm. personal emergency response systems. Right. There are systems that are being put in place for fall detection. But I think beyond that, we're starting to find ways that we can actually improve the functional status. Right. We, one of the uh, real exciting things that we've identified is we have now technologies with a customized VR headset that we can restore vision in patients wow. who are blind with macular degeneration. Wow. That's a, a remarkable breakthrough that uses That's a technology. Game changer. It's a game changer. We've got now ability to use hearing aids and modulate it on a smartphone. We've got an ability to use exoskeletons to get people more active. Right. So, terrific opportunities to use connectivity yeah. to improve the ability for us to better communicate and be more proactive. But at the same time, technology is to help improve the functional status of individuals. So we rely less on the healthcare resources and more on independence. Oh, I love that. Well, fantastic insights. Thank you very much. I, uh, I have great hope that uh, as I get older and grumpier that I'm going to have a lot more independence and uh, I guess better quality of life as well as a result of that. I think we all want that. Indeed. Well, David, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me. It's been My great pleasure. to meet you and get some insights from what you're doing and uh, look forward to seeing what's coming out of you and your team in the next six to 18 months. Thank you so much. Thanks. And folks, with that, we'll wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, I'm Des Blanchfield. We're here in Orlando at the Health Information Systems Symposium 2019. We'll see you in the next video.